So we have a reputation of showing you guys some of the poor quality bikes that we work on and how we fix certain issues that they have. But the questions that you always have down in the comments are, what else do you recommend? Who else makes good bikes? So I thought this is going to be a, a little chat through some of the experience that we have, and hopefully you guys can add to the discussion, and we'll try and discover um, who makes good bikes other than look and time because I have noted that I have mentioned those two brands quite a lot recently so this is going to be my attempt at doing this without mentioning those two brands okay here we go this is the relatively short list that we came up with um there we go so focus little German brand can't say that they have anything in their range that's particularly inspiring but I've always enjoyed working on their bikes. They always clean up really well. Whenever we have them in for service, and some of these bikes we might be working on is like more than a decade old, they, the paintwork cleans up really nicely. Everything comes apart really nicely. Everything goes back together. The brakes don't rub. The bottom brackets fit. They're one of those brands that I just go, oh, that was a really pleasurable experience working on. The bike looks pretty standard, but um, I've never really needed to fault a focus. So there we go. Um, Envy, the new Melee, etc. I've seen a couple of them up close now, and yeah, they're impressive workmanship as their wheels. You couldn't really not put them on there. And that's early days yet, but um, I don't think, knowing how Envy's quality control works, etc., I don't think you're going to have a problem. So, this is remember, this is about being consistently good. Okay, Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain is one of the few mountain bikes I'd really, really like to own one day. I've worked on several of them now, and they've always impressed me. The pivot bearing sort of enclosures are just beautifully made. The paintwork is immaculate, even decades after owning them, and really, really giving them a hard life. Um, they just seem to fit. I like how they put details in. And yeah, I don't know. That's one of the bikes that I'd really, really like to own one day, but opportunities never arisen to do it at a price I could afford. I love all their paintwork and everything else. Similar sort of thing with Pivot, actually. Um, although I am a bit upset with Pivot, don't offer a frame-only option anymore. I think that's a real shame because I think mountain biking should, in theory, lend itself to the upgrade, especially at that top end that Pivot um, position themselves at. But again, working on Pivots, they are always a beautiful thing to work on. It's like the engineer has thought about how a mechanic is going to remove Pivot bearings and work on them paint quality is always fantastic and yeah it's just one of those bikes i just like yeah this is a really high quality item in my hand also got felt on there uh, an american brand and yeah they make some really lovely stuff and especially their sort of aerodynamic time trial triathlon bikes as well they've got some really interesting stuff in there always beautifully finished I like the little finishing touches they have with them as well they're almost like an American version of look, like they were really innovative ideas, but well executed. Um, and yeah, I've always appreciated that someone's actually looked and spent some time, and I can always tell that some quality control has gone on there. Uh, Colnago um, has to be on there. They are. They still make beautiful bikes. They'll always make beautiful bikes, or hopefully that continues. But it's one of those bikes that people have owned these for decades and decades, and they still absolutely they don't want to sell them. They they keep them. Um, and yeah, when we service them, there's there's hardly anything ever wrong with them. You know, they all the parts just come apart beautifully. We've never had like a bottom bracket get stuck or anything like that. It's just um, beautifully made bikes with really good, luxurious paint. You know? But they ask high price, so we expect it. Uh, Argon 18, little Canadian company, really, really like their time trial bikes um, as well. And their road bikes are just... I think very underrated actually. I think they do some really, really nice stuff. But um we don't really talk about them enough. But yeah, if you ever see one, they are yeah, that I they're on the list. And then finally down there, bottom right hand corner is a brand called Quintana Roo. Now we've seen a few of these because of the work we do with some triathletes, and they're really famous for their triathlon bikes. They have just launched a new road bike. When I say just launched, it's probably be a couple of years ago now. But they do um, lovely colours. The paintwork's are really good quality. The sort of quite innovative designs as well, but you can still adapt them quite a lot. And um, yeah, if that's the market you're in, um, Quintana Roo, I have to say, it's that consistently good for me. Okay. So there's a few things here that I'd really wanted to put on the list, but we just went, ah, do you know what? It's just, it's not consistently Good. So this is a few anomalies aside, it could almost be that list. So we've got Mason, 
like the only people I know of who are really trying to make an effort to make high quality aluminium bikes. Um, and they're really, really nice, but they're not quite at that sort of early 2000s Cannondale standard yet, you know, with those beautifully smooth worlds and that paintwork shown you before we've had some of those old Cannondales in that paintwork is still fantastic two decades later they were just like that oh I would be all over them um Bianchi we've got on there because here in the UK we only ever really see their top of the range stuff um and that is fantastic it's really nice quality but they have such a massive range that if we were to put it on uh, consistently good and you look in Europe and where Bianchi is a much bigger thing and a much wider range comes um, I don't think it, it quite hits there. They sort of lose interest as you come down the price scale with Bianchi. Uh, we've got Basso bikes. Again, some really fantastic examples, but every now and then just a couple of little things just creep in, which are like, ugh. it's so close. Santa Cruz is on there as well because um, they make some fantastic bikes, but they eat through pivot bearings like no tomorrow. But um you, you do obviously get them on, on free warranty and they send out those pivot bearings straight away, but there's still an awful lot of labour involved. And I love how the fact they've got all their cable routine is beautiful, apart from their dropper cable routine, which is horrendous. And you're like, come on, just not quite on the consistent uh, We've got Orbea on there, similar sort of thing. I think Orbea makes some lovely bikes, but as they've expanded, again, they've kind of lost interest a little bit as they come down the range. So as you enter sort of the Orbea market, if you like, on a cheaper price point, you don't get the same quality that probably made them famous. Um, and Scott, Scott actually, for the really big brand that it is, I think are doing some really, really fantastic stuff. Only thing that bothers me about Scott is they've got some really innovative ideas and they don't always keep a good inventory of the parts needed to actually fix them, which in contrast is why Trek is on the list because BB90 aside, Recently, we haven't really seen a bad Trek, and we've also been able to get parts for them really, really easily. The Trek website has just been a fantastic resort. Get parts, crack on. Um, and I had sort of actually, that's that's a noticeable difference compared to all of the other big brands that really haven't had cause for concern on any sort of Trek recently, apart from probably the early 2010s, etc., or the mid 2010s when they had those sort of BB90 issues, which are now starting to have problems now some of this actually might be because trek dealers are doing some more work before they get to a shop like this so maybe if you're a trek dealer you might have a different opinion but as bikes come to us um haven't already left the shop they, they seem to be in good conditions that's either well done to trek or well done to the mechanics who are working in trek dealerships okay um a couple of things here which we thought exceeded expectations we're not going to say they're blanket good quality but i think for the price that you pay you probably get more than you expect they're better quality than you expect for the price so chinelli uh on there i think they've got some op open molds in there but they do tend to come through well finished uh they've got some lovely bikes some lovely paintwork there Website is appalling. I don't know who does their photography, but when you see their bikes in the flesh as opposed to their website, you will be pretty chuffed, I think. Um, they make some really lovely stuff. Uh, Cube is on there as well. Big German brand. Again, big mass-produced stuff, almost in that same thing as of Trek. You're buying it at a lower price point, an awful lot of value there, and they're probably better than expected. The only downside to Cube is probably on some of their bikes like the Stereo, where the engineers haven't really thought about how a mechanic might remove a bearing safely because they, how they put their pivot bearings together is not very mechanic friendly. But um, yeah, other than that, I think they're pretty good. And Saracen, uh, a mountain bike brand, which I actually think get a pretty good frame. They tend to come supplied with some fairly value components. But if you ever wanted to buy into a bike um, that you thought you might upgrade as you go, you could very happily put some good quality components on a Saracen and get a good bike there as well. So there we go. Some exceeds expectations. And then we got some unmentionables. And we were going to put like a whole list of unmentionables, but we actually went on to like AI website and just came up with random brand and just typed in over overhyped, overpriced and inconsistent. And this is stuff where it's just there isn't really a brand there. It's a Chinese factory that's being rebranded. 
and I've just got no interest in that at all. And I wish the slogans were like massive amounts of marketing, uh, overpriced for what they are. They're really just using their frame as a way to sell Shimano group sets um, or whatever, outsourced and an unknown quality the consistency. It's just, I don't know, I, I wouldn't like to call them a proper brand, if you like. It's like a marketing logo. So, um, <laughs> so and then we got this identity crisis, the things that we thought, well, you guys probably expect to see on the list, but they're probably they're good, but for the prices these brands are asking, we just didn't feel like we could put them on the consistency consistently good list because they're not consistently good. Pinarello, I as we've had experience that we have with Pinarello are Pinarello owners go down to the Pinarello brand store in Manchester. Um had five or six owners who have spent an awful lot of money at the Pinarello Brown store in Manchester reporting a relatively lacklustre experience, had problems. We've had um, paint flaking off. We've had broken ridge seat stays. We've had brake uh, mounts, which are out of spec, not necessarily just not flat, but just completely out of spec. We've had bottom brackets out of spec. We've had seat posts that slide down out of the way. Um, and on the Pinarello website, there's like a really long document about how you should build a Pinarello bike. And it loads and loads of copper copper grease and oh my god their mechanics go to town with that like if you ever have bikes from the Pinarello brand store it will come caked in copper grease it's everywhere um it's no wonder things slip and come undone because there's copper grease absolutely all over it um so yeah i the prices that they're trying to charge i just kind of got get on board with it uh, Cervelo, although nearly every Cervelo at the moment is on sale, so if you get one in the sale, you're probably not doing too bad. But um, it's, it's their bottom brackets that really let the Cervelo down. BB right, etc. It's probably a nice engineering solution, but it's just poorly executed, badly. Uh, Villier Triestina, uh, again, um, the money that they're paying and you get them, you just don't unpack it and feel like you've got a quality item don't feel like a high quality thing in your hand. They feel like you've got a track or a specialized or something. It doesn't, expectations don't meet reality. Exactly the same with Cipollini. Like they're very, very nice. I love the paint designs on them and they've got some fantastic ideas and some colors. Very much seems like it's a designer thing as opposed to a high quality thing because once you actually unpack it for the price that you pay, you've gone look beyond the paintwork. Um, for me, that quality doesn't represent the price that they're trying to charge. And Yeti, you know, I I, I brought myself a Yeti. I love how it rides, but I'm just a bit disappointed with the quality of it. If if I'm honest, it's um, the quality is like eight deep, very similar to Cipollini. Lovely designs. I love that sort of sloping top tube thing that's got going on. But when I look inside, it's just yeah, a bit disappointing. Um, so the big names. I uh, haven't really mentioned these too much apart from those sort of Trek and Cube because there's too many it depends because the ranges are so big. There are some fantastic things in there. A lot of it will depend on the the mechanic that actually put it together, whether they actually noticed things that might need facing. So a lot of this will actually depend on the bike shop that sold it uh, and their training and their quality control. But the reason these haven't, Hit the bigger list is specialized we come across loads of problems where specialized range now it's got so, so complicated and they've always got widgets and gadgets on them uh, and they don't necessarily always have easily available parts or those long lead times for those parts so if you've got pay, um, specialized rubay with that head shock thing getting bits and pieces for that fixed is more painful than it needs to be it's not impossible but it's just not as seamless as it should be there's their inventory holding must be getting quite big now as they're trying to hold stock of all these like legacy bits. Uh, giant, fantastic value frames, but when you look at the entire package, uh, I don't think it's there. They also, as you come down their range into that aluminium stuff, I don't think the sort of quality is there. Again, just inconsistencies as you go through go through the brand. Cannondale, innovative, innovative great engineering ideas, but often poorly executed. Um, I've owned lots and lots of Cannondales. I've always loved them for like their weird, quirky designs and stuff, but always been like a... Probably what got me into bike mechanics was trying to fix Cannondales, if I'm honest. 
Um, BMC, similar, love the team machine and the road machine, fantastic bikes, but like what racket problems. Ridley, as you know, they've got some fantastic stuff, but they just can't execute on, on their stuff through that. The range, Canyon, we featured on the channel loads before. So I think these are the brands where get them, but make sure you keep your receipt and keep an eye on your warranty um, and all that sort of stuff. And also keep an eye on the bike shop that actually built them and actually done the funnel. A lot of how the quality will depend on the bike shop that put it together, I think. There we go. That is um, a look at hopefully something that answered some of your questions. As always, please get down in the comments, add to the discussion. Um, let me know what I've got wrong. I'm pretty sure I have. This is just a start of a 10. Like I say, it's a podcast. Hopefully, you enjoyed listening. And um, yeah, make sure you get down in the comments and read the comments as well. All right, take it easy. Have a good weekend.